Hi everyone, this is Dr. Manu Krishnanki and today we will be discussing about the anatomy of diencephalon. Diencephalon is a part of the brain between the cerebrum above and the midbrain below. It's a simplified version and it consists of the third ventricle and the structures that forms its boundaries. It extends from the interventricular foramen the interventricular foramen is nothing but the connection between the two lateral ventricles which will open up into the third ventricle and it extends up to the posterior commissure. The parts are the hypothalamic sulcus divides the diencephalon into two parts namely the part above it and the part below it. The part above it is termed as the pars dorsalis and it consists of the thalamus metathalamus and the epithalamus so you can make mnemonics out of it to remember the structures pertaining to the pars dorsalis and pars ventralis that you can do accordingly then the second part is the pars ventralis which comes below the hypothalamic sulcus that includes the hypothalamus and the subthalamus and the cavity of the diencephalon is the third ventricle here you can see the diencephalon. So I have made a representation here. So you can see the thalamus here. And on the bottom of the thalamus you can see the hypothalamic sulcus which divides the diencephalon into pars dorsalis and pars ventralis. So the part below the hypothalamic sulcus is the hypothalamus. Above it is the thalamus you can see here. And uh, in front of this, you can see the anterior commissure. And the extent, while explaining the extent, I have told you about the posterior part that is the posterior commissure. So, this is the posterior commissure here. And you can see a small structure here that is termed as the pineal gland that we will be discussing later. So, this concludes the structures pertaining to the diencephalon. Let's discuss about the pars dorsalis now. So the first part among it is the thalamus. So we'll go in detail with the thalamus, which is two ovoid shape of masses of gray matter situated on either sides of the third ventricle. And the dimensions are androposteriorly 3 cm in length and laterally it is 1.5 cm in width. So they are two ovoid shaped masses with these dimensions and these two masses are interconnected by a bundle of fibers that is called the interthalamic adhesion. So they are interconnected by interthalamic adhesion. And the thalamus is composed of the following parts. That is, the, it is having of two poles. They are the anterior pole and the posterior pole and four surfaces which includes the superior, inferior, medial and lateral surfaces. So here we have a simple representation of the thalamus which is ovoid mass, two ovoid masses which is androposteriorly it is 3 cm and laterally it is 1.5 cm and it is having an anterior pole, a posterior pole and here you can see there is a connection between these two that is the interthalamic adhesion. The poles in detail it is the anterior pole is rounded and is directed forwards and medially and it forms the posterior boundary of interventricular foramen. So previously I have explained what is interventricular foramen and we will be further studying it in the ventricular system of the brain. The posterior pole is elongated and expanded and is directed backwards and laterally and it overhangs the superior colliculus and the surfaces namely the first one that is the superior surface it is convex and covered by a layer of white matter and it forms the floor of the lateral ventricles so keep this in mind in the next slide we'll see how the relations are and we'll see the diagrammatic version of this the inferior surface is convex and anteriorly related to the hypothalamus and posteriorly related to the subthalamus, while the medial surface it is convex and related to the lateral wall of third ventricle and covered by the ependymal cells. 
So note down what are the ependymal cells. That is an assignment for you. Like uh, you have to see what is ependymal cells. You have already studied, I guess. That we'll see later. Then the lateral surface, it is flat and related to the posterior limb of internal capsule. So these are the relations of the surfaces of thalamus. So here we have the coronal section through the cerebrum where you can see the thalamus here. The blue colored one is the thalamus. And you can make out the surfaces. There is superior surface, lateral surface, medial surface and inferior surface. And in between the two thalami, you can see the third ventricle. And here you can see the lateral ventricle, one and two. So you can see the superior surface is related to the floor of the lateral ventricle here. And the medial surface forms the wall of the third ventricle here. And it will be covered by the ependymal cells, as I have told earlier. And you can make out the relations here. So the thalamus here, then you can see above the thalamus you have the caudate nucleus, then the lendiform nucleus here which is composed of putamen and globus pallidus we have studied in the previous classes. Then we have a thin layer of grey matter that is the clostrum, then the subthalamic nucleus here, red nucleus here and the substantia nigra here. So these are the structures which you should be knowing in relation to the thalamus. The internal structure of the thalamus. The white matter part of the thalamus, the lateral surface of the thalamus is covered by a thin layer of white matter called as the external medullary lamina. And the vertical Y-shaped sheet of white matter within the thalamus is called the internal medullary lamina. So you have to remember the two terms, the external medullary lamina and the internal medullary lamina. Then coming to the grey matter, the thalamic grey matter consists of a number of nuclei. The internal medullary lamina divides the thalamus into three parts. The internal medullary lamina is a Y-shaped uh, layer of white matter and that divides the thalamus into anterior part, medial part and the lateral part. The anterior part, there is anterior tubercle and it lies between the limbs of the Y-shaped white matter layer that is nothing but the internal medullary lamina. Then the medial and lateral parts on either sides of the stem of the Y-shaped white matter layer that is the internal medullary lamina where each part consists of a number of nuclei. So here we have a representation of the thalamus. So here you can see a Y-shaped uh, white matter layer which divides the thalamus into three parts, the anterior part, then the medial part and the lateral part. And you can see it is further divided into small, small parts that we'll be discussing later. So just have an outlook about it. Between the two Y-shaped branches of the internal medullary lamina, you can see the anterior nucleus. And on either side of the stem of this internal medullary lamina, you can see the medial part and the lateral part. So let's name it and outside the thalamus on the lateral surface, you can see the external medullary lamina here and the reticular nucleus here. So these are the main things you should remember about the parts of the thalamus and you can see name the few thalamic nuclei here. So here anterior nucleus, which is in the anterior part, then the medial dorsal nucleus here on the medial part. Then on the lateral part it is again divided into a posterior pulvinar part. Then lateral dorsal part, lateral posterior part, ventral anterior part, ventral lateral and ventral posterior. So this concludes the anterior part consists of the anterior nucleus the medial part consists of the large medial dorsal nucleus and a small medial ventral nucleus that won't be visible from the view that we have seen earlier. 
so that we have we need a cross sectional image to see the small medial ventral nucleus so there are two parts two nuclei in the medial part that is the large medial dorsal nucleus and the small medial ventral nucleus and on the lateral part there are two tiers of nuclei the dorsal tier of nuclei consists of the lateral dorsal the lateral posterior and the pulvinar part and the, these are the dorsal tier of nuclei while the ventral tier of nuclei consists of the ventral anterior ventral lateral ventral posterior and the ventral posterior again is subdivided into ventral posterolateral and ventral posteromedial so you should know how to draw this diagram so you have to reproduce the same diagram that we have shown in the last slide and the other nuclei of the thalamus includes the intralaminar nuclei then the midline or paraventricular nuclei then the reticular nucleus and the medial and lateral geniculate bodies so these are the structures which are like which these are the nuclei which are pertaining to the thalamus and the functions of the thalamus the thalamus acts as a relay station for the following functions which includes the impulses from the face head and the taste buds it acts as a relay station then it acts as the relay station for extraceptive and proprioceptive sensations except the face and the head then there is cerebellar impulses which are being relayed to the thalamus and the medial geniculate body of the thalamus it acts as the relay station for auditory impulses while the lateral geniculate body acts as a relay station for visual impulses so these are the functions and the clinical anatomy includes the thalamic syndrome that is usually occurring by a vascular lesion of the thalamus region and which is having some characteristic features it causes the thalamic overreaction that is nothing but the pain touch and temperature threshold decreased on the opposite side of the body and it causes severe pain and uh, severe sen burning sensation and all on the opposite side of the body so that is called the thalamic syndrome and it also causes emotional instability so this concludes the thalamus and further classes will be dealing with the other parts of uh, the do past dorsalis thank you